The walls we built around us to keep out sadness also keep out the joy. Jim Rohn. It took me a very long time to figure out how to live in the joyful moments, especially when things like cancer and heartbreak and depression and financial instability seem to creep up around every corner. All of these things can feel utterly crippling in the moment. They can make your heart beat uneasy, leave your chest feeling heavy, and leave you wondering how you will ever dig yourself out of the hole you find yourself in. For so long, I found myself on the seeker's path. I guess, in a way, I will always be on that path. Today, however, it looks very different. As I get older, I'm starting to see things from a different lens. Accepting that there are things we cannot control in life has been the hardest part of this journey, but also accepting that my hands play a role in many of the outcomes has been liberating. And accepting that, even in the darkest days, there are moments of deep joy to be had has been life-changing. Good morning. I am trying out a new look here. Not much for scarves, but I like the little do-rags, so I think this is kind of cute. And I put on some makeup today, feeling pretty good. Anyways, I took a poll on YouTube and on my Instagram to see what you wanted as the next video. And I'm a little surprised, honestly. Not too surprised, but a little surprised. Definitely thought the video on dating with chronic illness was gonna be number one. I thought it was gonna win by a landslide, but alas, it came in second or third, or tied with um, the laundry room makeover one, I believe. Let's actually take a look. Oh, I've been singing Christmas songs in my head the last couple days when I started thinking about this topic of joy and being joyful. Christmas songs. Christmas songs started coming into my brainwave. I'm okay with it, but it's kind of funny because it's March. All right, so I took a poll on, in, oh, interesting. Okay, so as of the other day, finding joyful moments with chronic health issues was number one. As of today, dating with chronic health issues is number one. But because I was planning this more so the other day, we're gonna go with this one and I'll do dating next week. I also took this poll on Instagram and the joyful one and then it was like dating and laundry makeover were tied. As I said in the intro to this, it took me so long to figure out how to be joyful. From my teens into my 20s and let's say my early mid 30s, I had no concept of what joyful meant to me. I struggled with so much depression, so much anxiety, so much self-doubt and self-worth issues that I couldn't even begin to understand what a joyful existence felt like to me or meant to me. To be honest, how I found what it means to be joyful in my life has been the most heartbreaking and the most liberating experience of my life. And here are my thoughts on it. So I think the first thing that is so important is to figure out what a joyful existence even means to you. With the onset of social media, I think that we spend so much time looking at everybody else's world and everybody else's existence that we have kind of built up this idea that we get our understanding of what joy and happiness means from looking out at the external world. It's really important to bring it back in and think about what does joy and happiness mean to me. Somebody else can be sharing an experience on social media and they may look really, really happy, but inside they may not feel that way. And I think that's really, really an important thing to remember when you are looking at social media is that not everything is what it seems. And people mostly show their highlight reels and it's not reality. Something that really changed my life was understanding that. Going deeper into understanding what makes me joyful and happy as a person. For one person, joy may be traveling non-stop around the world, experiencing all these different cultures and foods and, and ways of living. And for another person, joy may be sitting on the back porch, watching the sunset with their partner, sipping on a glass of wine or a cup of tea. Not everybody is the same. Bringing it back to social media a little bit, I think that it's really, really easy to look at the external world and think that 
because something may or may not make somebody else happy, it's probably gonna make us happy too. So I think the first thing that we need to do is step back and figure out what does joy and what does happiness mean to us? And what does a joyful and happy existence mean to us personally? In my world today, things that bring me so much joy are the most simplest things. It's looking out at the view that I have. It is drinking my cup of coffee in the morning. That first sip is just like nothing Nothing else. It is cuddling with my dog and my cat. It's being with my family. It is embracing and snuggling with my nieces and nephews. More my nieces now. My nephews are getting too cool for that. It's this experience of really truly being in the moment. And when I'm doing these things, I am detached from my phone. I am really just being in the moment and I'm not waiting for the external things around me to give me the sense of like validation of existing in a way or telling me how to be happy. It's really, really simple. The moral of that is like really understanding what lights you up, what makes you happy and what doesn't. So take some time to, to really think about the things that are in your life right now and whether or not they bring you joy. Make a list, edit that list, go through it with a fine tooth comb and really ask yourself honestly if the things that you have in your life make you happy. Leads me into my second one and that is question everything. Kind of leads me back to like really looking and analyzing the things that are in your life and questioning, do I really want this? Is this the world telling me that I want this or does my soul and my heart really want this? Like get brutally honest with yourself. And this is really, really hard to do. But I think so often when we feel that sense of numbness, it's because we're just existing in the world. We are doing everything that we think we should be doing. We're not doing the things that we really, really want to be doing or feel authentic to us. Like it's okay to rock the boat a little bit in your life. It's okay to push up against the edges of what is considered acceptable by mainstream society and what you want individually. And then this will lead into number three and that is shifting your perspective. So I think something that I started doing, well, I honestly, I've always been doing this. I've always questioned everything because that is just my personality. Doesn't mean I've always acted on everything that I question. I definitely have lived a safe life in many ways, in many areas of my life. At some point I started questioning deeper. It was probably about the time that I got married and I realized that I had married somebody that wasn't truly good for me. Although I had the lifestyle and the life I wanted, I didn't have the partner. No amount of forcing myself into this little box was going to make me truly happy. And so eventually that led me to leave my marriage and it sent me on this path of trying to figure out what really felt like me as opposed to what I was doing because the role I played in my family the role I played in society what I thought everybody wanted for me and I started challenging that a little bit I started letting go of certain things and and also there are things that happened in life that I had no control over one of those being not being able to have children. And when I had my hysterectomy, I started questioning whether or not I even truly wanted kids for myself. And there's a lot of nuance within that question. Um, and I think that it doesn't need to be fully resolved. I just think that I needed to come to a place where I accepted that I was never gonna have biological children and figure out a way to be okay with that. And in doing so, I started watching my nieces and I just found a place of being so happy and joyful with that being the outcome for my life. I honestly do not think I would trade it for the world. To me, it feels like I have the best of both worlds. I have this independence and the ability to do what I want when I want. And I have this incredible relationship and bond with these children that feel like my own. And I know that I will never truly understand what that means, but something to think about is if we can adopt children and we can get that feeling of them being ours and we could do that with our nieces and nephews or our friends children we can still get that maternal feeling and it just kind of comes down to shifting your perspective a little bit so the other thing that i had to start doing in regards to shifting my perspective is stop living in this world of lack and i am by no means perfect at it i definitely get caught up in in things like sure i would like i would love a partner i often find myself creeping into 
to this place of feeling sad because I have not met my person yet and I would love more money you know and I, I get caught up in the stress of what my finances often look like but there's a certain aspect of taking responsibility for that as well that brings me back to a place of joy and it can be really easy to feel shame and guilt for certain things like for owning your your part in it doesn't have to be a shameful and guilty thing it can it can actually be really empowering and it can set you on this path where you are making changes in your life so that you can have the things that you want that's probably another video so if you take something like a linear line and you're right here and the thing that you want is all the way down here you cannot expect to get to here from here without many twists and turns and bumps in the road and sometimes you will be smooth sailing and other times you will hit a bump and it will alter your course i think that it's so important to know what the final outcome is that you want i have that big goal but then to kind of reel it back in and take one step at a time and i think when we focus too much on the final outcome it really can overwhelm us and take that joy away from the experience of even getting to that final outcome. A great example of this is my current situation with healing cancer. In September, I was flying high. I had just been interviewed on a local TV show. I had people inquiring right and left. I had all these opportunities. And then in November or in October, I found out that I had this mass. And then in November, I had surgery and I was healing all of December and January. And then I started chemotherapy January 13th. And now I am left figuring out what this new normal is for me. And it's not the same, but it's my responsibility to figure out how to still live my life during this and finding those moments of true unhinged joy and happiness. Because if I don't, what is all of this fighting for my life and my health? What does it all mean if I'm not doing it to really truly live my life? Another great example is, let's say your goal is you want to buy a house and your finances are just a mess and you want to buy this, this house over here that feels like it's a million miles away. Well, what is one thing that you can start doing today? Great example of what I'm doing. I use the Capital app, I'll link it down below. It's just a really easy and mindless way of putting money aside every week, every month, every year. And you know, you can set all these goals. You can either set a fixed amount or you can roll change over. Um, there's so many different options that you can do within this app. And it's just a really great way to put money aside and then six months on the road, you have 300 bucks. It's like this little step that you are taking to take a little bit of control and take action and to course correct. To me, that feels really joyful and it feels very empowering. So number four, and I am first and foremost, by no means telling you this is right for you. This is what worked for me and it was utterly life-changing and as somebody who tends to walk the pretty holistic path in life accepting that I needed this help was by far the hardest thing I've ever had to do and that was getting on an antidepressant and again I want to clarify this may not be right for you it took me 40 years to realize that my depression and my mood swings and my hopeless feeling was more than just the everyday blues. Had a real chemical imbalance in my head and I needed that additional help. I think sometimes when you go on medication, you know, one of my biggest fears was that it was going to alter my personality. And over time, what I realized is being on my antidepressant so much alter my personality, but allow my true personality to come through because it quieted all the external noise and all the outside anxiety and obsessive compulsive worrying and it just allows me to live a little bit more and it slows my mind down a little bit and as somebody who's tried literally i haven't tried everything but i've tried so much over the last 20 years to come to this place where i can just be present in life and and feel joy and happiness no matter what's going on even when i'm going through cancer 
I still feel a tremendous amount of joy all the time. And I really credit it to making this huge, bold decision to go on medication. I'm talking to one of my good friends recently who is getting on one herself. And she is very similar to me. We live very holistically. And she made a comment to me and she said, I just, I know that there's probably more that I could do on my own or more things that I could try. And I stopped her and I said, what if you have tried everything that you possibly can? And the thing that is going to work is getting on medication. At some point, we just have to do the thing that is truly best for us. When we can get past what we have learned from kind of all these external sources and be open-minded to trying these different things, even though they're really scary or they're uncomfortable or they feel strange, we just have no idea what it can open our world up to. Had I not gone on my antidepressant, I don't know where I would be today. I don't know what my life would look like. I do know the ability to just be present and experience these really simple moments of joy, no matter what's going on in my life, is credited to going on medication. There is nothing to be ashamed of if you might need to do this too. There's so much that I could continue talking about. This video is already pretty long and so I'll probably have to do a part two at some point. But the last thing I want to touch on and something that I think is vital to being able to figure out how to feel and experience joy no matter what you're going through, whether that's chronic illness, heartbreak, depression, is learning to honor all of your feelings. Even in my times when I was chronically more depressed, I don't think that I was truly honoring my feelings. I was still desperately running from them. Now when I feel those similar feelings starting to rise, I am able to sit with them a little bit easier to know that they are going to pass. And if they're not passing, then I know that I need to go talk to somebody about it. I think that also because of social media, we live in this world of chronic toxic positivity. This is a whole other video that I wanna do in and of itself. It's okay to feel sad for a whole day, a week. I think that if it goes past a week, then it's important to maybe like check in with yourself and, and see whether or not you need to go talk to somebody. But that is dependent on you. You know, you have to ask yourself, what has been going on in my life? Have you lost somebody close to you? Are you going through a divorce? Are you going through something like cancer or some other chronic health issue? Because if you are having those so-called negative feelings aren't necessarily a bad thing. It seems pretty normal to me to be going through these huge things in life, to feel scared and sad and fearful and and angry and, and you know, the list goes on. What I think is really important is can you still experience happiness and joy when you're going through these things? And if not, then it's time to figure out how to be able to do so, which brings me back to all of the things I just said. So how do I honor my feelings? I just get honest with myself. Usually I can feel something brewing inside before it's like actively present in my life. And it's in these moments where I just ask myself, what's going on? What do I feel like is missing right now? Or what can I do to like allow these feelings to wash over me and wash through me? How can I find my way back to joy? And that's not by being toxically positive and bypassing all of these feelings, that's living these feelings and being honest about them with yourself and with the people in your life, calling the people that you know are your support, maybe calling a therapist, calling your doctor, whomever that person may be for you, and just accepting that we are human and that we have this huge spectrum of emotions. I always like to say that like we were given all of these emotions to feel them all. We wouldn't have been given all of them if we weren't supposed to feel them all. I do believe that. They all serve a purpose. That comes back to just really figuring out who you are and what you want and, and what these feelings feel like inside of you. You have to figure out your own path. I know that is not the answer that people want. And I know that so many of us just want to be told how to do something and fix it and the best way of going about it. But that's just not how humans work. We are not the same. We are all 100% different and we need to we need to understand ourselves so much and so deeply so we can figure out how we feel about things. We put all the pieces of our lives together on our own. Again, 
this is such a nuanced conversation. There are so many different ways to feel immense joy when we are going through things in life. And I just, I encourage you to continue exploring it and continue thinking about it. Leave any questions you may have below. I will do my best to answer them either in the comments or with other videos. I also want you to know that you are not alone. You are never alone. And sometimes when we are going through things, it feels that we are. There are so many resources out there for us now. Start following those breadcrumbs. I hope that you can take that first step. Again, let me know what questions you may have below. I love talking about things like this. This is something that actually brings me a lot of joy. So if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe, like, do all the things to be notified, and I'll see you next week where I'm pretty sure we are gonna talk about dating. Bye.